speakers here a little louder. I don't know what I did. In fact, I didn't do anything, but it seems it's a little louder, so we can hear you better than, than before. Uh, and it seems that today uh, we're going to be more virtual than, than usual. Uh, today we only have one, one student in the, let's say, the physical class. Everyone else is, is online. Um, let's just give uh, people a second so that they join us. All right, so we're going to our third uh, meeting here. Uh, today we are going to discuss the wisdom of crowds as presented uh, mainly by Suro Vyaki in his, uh, in his book, uh, but also conveying ideas of many other authors that, were, uh, that inspired Suro Vyaki in, in his work. Uh, the wisdom of crowds is uh, one of the perspectives of collective intelligence. Uh, in general, you will see that it's, uh, it's a, what, what the wisdom of crowds proposes is that we think uh, of the collective not as a, let's say, a collective of smart people, but of a collective that can be smart because uh, different people there will, have, will see uh, a problem from these different perspectives, considering that the problem is the same and considering that everyone is uh, really interested in solving that problem, uh, we, we end up getting, well, getting those different perspectives, each one of them with their own biases, with their own problems of, you know, we see the world through the lenses that we put in front of our eyes, that may be physical lenses like my, my glasses, but they may also be uh, intellectual lenses that, that allow us to perceive the world somehow, uh, and others perceive it differently. Uh, we, all, we are all biased in the ways we perceive the world, and the wisdom of crowds claims that one way of uh, getting to a, let's say, a real truth would be uh, making sure that those biases cancel each other. So uh, there's, in, in whatever decisions we make, or in, in whatever uh, ideas we have, there is uh, a content of, of truth, and there is also a, a content of uh, part of it is, is, is our, our own bias. Uh, and, and here, um, the idea is that those biases can be cancelled out, of course, if we do not have a bias in the whole population or in the whole group. So, if when you were reading, come on, um, if you were when you were reading Suroviecki's work, you were thinking about all the polarization that we have had in society, for example, over the last few years, and you'll say, is that the wisdom of crowds? Uh, well, no, notice that uh, polarization happens precisely when we do not follow some of the rules that are established for the wisdom of crowds to, to work. Uh, we, for the wisdom of crowds to work, we should not have uh, individuals that get to be influential uh, enough on others that the others are not thinking any longer. Or, uh, and besides, one of the issues that we have with our, um, with our social networks, the electronic social networks we have, of course, the, the, the real social, net social networks in which we are involved are not, do, not, the, do not have an algorithm behind it, but the, so the, the electronic social networks have an al algorithm that wants to present us uh, some information that uh, that algorithm thinks that will call our attention and, and that will increase our level of involvement in that platform. Uh, and of course, that generate, generates an amplification of the biases, not the, the knowledge that we have, right? So again, I do think that, uh, that uh, there is a lot of the stupidity of the crowds and the, uh, let's say, instead of the, 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 uh, the collective intelligence, the, 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 again, uh, the stupidity uh, or of the collective that still needs to be researched. This is actually very new to us. Uh, most researchers only started getting concerned with the problems of our acting collectively, electronically, uh, more recently, uh, let's say over the last maybe less than 10 years, right, when we started seeing the effects of fake news uh, and, 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 and the scary uh, situation in which fake news become uh, real news to, 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 let's say, to parts of the population that are already, um, let's say, uh, prompt to accept that as true. Uh, so we are much closer today to, let's say, to, to the ideas that appear in a, a, a movie like Matrix, where uh, it's, it's actually not only the, the red or the blue pill, it's actually, or it could be, but it could even be more than, than two pills. We also seem to have, polarization seems to have, usually, at least until now, it has happened among two uh, larger groups. We, we have not developed any trends so far of, uh, or at least it is visible to, to the majority of us, of, um, of uh, polarization in several different uh, poles. I, I'm sure that it, it's happening also. There are uh, maybe smaller uh, groups that bond together because, uh, and, and around crazy ideas, uh, could be religious ideas, could be um, 
ideological ideas, but th there may be other, uh, other uh, uh, collective stupidity around, I'm sure that there is, that does not polarize among, let's say, two uh, major ones, as it appears, as, as it has appeared in uh, election times, or in fact, uh, and, and, and we notice that one thing that happens is that we do not have any governor or any rulers any longer, they're always in campaign, right? Uh, this has happened at, at least for the, the, the last few years, we notice that we have, we do not have rulers any longer for, for countries, they, they, they are elected and they keep doing campaign for the rest of their, their time and they forget that they're there to rule not only for those who voted for them, but for everyone. So there's a lot, political science uh, should be very involved in understanding uh, the, what happens, the trends with, with, with the crowds, uh, uh, sociologists for sure, uh, and, and even people, if you're here a computer, applied computing uh, student, you should be concerned because we develop the technology, we develop the algorithms uh, that originally may not have had an intent of generating polarization, right? I don't think that we are, it's, it's not a thing about the good and the, the ugly or, uh, it, 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 for sure, the idea was to generate engagement. Uh, and, uh, but, but we, we have to, even if we're more technical people that are dealing with when we want to generate engagement, but we should think a little out of the box and try to think of the possible potential consequences of that. And if we're not able to do that, because it's, it's, it's really difficult, I mean, no one had, uh, uh, at least, or if, if, if someone had, had thought of this, it was someone who, whose, whose ideas were not, had not had the opportunity of being heard by the, the large, uh, let, let, by the large crowds, right? But uh, now it's clear to everyone, and uh, even uh, people in the technical field should start concerning, uh, uh, okay, we, we did that with uh, one intention, the thing went wrong, or went, went in a bad direction, what do we have to do to try and, and fix this, and maybe bring us back to the romantic days of collective intelligence, in which we thought, as Pierre Lévy did, uh, and, and which is still a, a very nice perception of the world, that each one of us knows something that needs to be shared with the, ha the, the, the rest uh, of mankind. So everyone, everyone has uh, his or her own knowledge that is worth being shared, uh, and, and, and therefore we are all important, we are all relevant to, to society, but we should uh, figure out and even technical ways of making sure that people are heard when they have something to say, and, uh, and, and also provide incentives for them to be, keep quiet when they have to learn from, from others. Right? We, uh, another interesting thing about our technologies is that when they, when, when they showed us that we didn't need to keep doing uh, broadcasting as in the past, where just a few had, uh, let's say, a powerful uh, a speaker in front of their mouth, and, 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 and an amplifier, and could talk loud, TV channels, the radio, newspapers, or whatever, and everyone else could only absorb those other people's knowledge, and maybe agree or disagree with it, with it but uh, in a quiet way, in a way that could not be shared with others, right? That was the past. When we figured out that we had a say, uh, we, we had been oppressed for so long, let's say we had been quiet for so long, then suddenly everyone wanted to speak out. And this is what generates the, the cacophony uh, of our, our social networks. And at the same time, it generated an acknowledgement am among, uh, and now I'll be a little cruel, among the stupid, uh, that, they, that there are other stupid around, right? Yeah. In the past, they, thought, they, they probably thought, well, maybe I'm the, I'm the only one who thinks this way. Uh, and now someone brings up a, a stupid idea and figures out that there are hundreds or thousands or millions of other people that have that same crazy idea. And we, as mankind, uh, maybe uh, go down instead of, uh, of, of, of looking for the, 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 at least for the virtues that inspired uh, the, let's see, the, the good thinkers uh, of the past. Um, so again, this may be, uh, this may even sound a little elitist when you say, well, um, you know, there are people that have something to say, there are others that don't. Uh, so we should, uh, and in fact, we have always, as, as tribes, as in the past, as, as nations, we have always selected our leaders somehow. The kings, for example, of course, uh, afterward, all, all systems seem to deteriorate afterwards, right? But many of the, the kings, they were, let's say, elected king at some stage, right? During a war, for example, it was that warrior that, uh, that was the brave person uh, and that led, uh, a, a, let's say, a group to, to winning, and then they said, you are going to be our leader. Uh, and, and so, uh, and, and even later, when we, we think of, of dynasties of leader, okay, so, so, the, the, so someone had a grandfather who was a great uh, warrior, but now the, 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 the grandson doesn't resemble the grandfather any longer, but 
we, we still, you know, the, the, the reasons why we kept monarchies for, for so long and, and they still exist was that people thought, well, if, if we give those people power to represent us somehow, that is to the general interest. And I notice I'm not, I'm not a monarchist here. Uh, I'm only saying that the, there were reasons uh, for, 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 for societies to have chosen. It seems that it, it, it is given, right? It seems that someone uh, once said, I'm going to be the king, and everyone else said yes. No, of course, uh, after a while, they, they get powerful enough that nobody wants to dare that they, 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 they are the, the, the current kings and that their, king, their kids are going to be the, their successors or everything, simply because they built power. But that power that they built is seen by the, the people as being something that can be of their interest because the power of the king may allow him or uh, well, the king or, the, or a queen, him or her, to, to mobilize uh, armies, to, to mobilize uh, uh, financial resources. Uh, kings are usually rich, right? They, because they collect money from, from, from their people and then, of course, they benefit from their, 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 that money themselves, which people may not find necessarily that great. But at the same time, they, 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 they organize an army to defend the people. Uh, this happens even with Brazilian militia. Uh, the, I, don't know, I don't know if that's what we call them in English. Uh, uh, the, these armed groups that protect, pretty much in quotations here, protect certain populations. And then they, they in exchange, they say, well, you can only buy uh, gas, cooking gas, from me. You can only buy water from, from me or whatever. But it's, it is an arrangement. Uh, it is a collective arrangement. Uh, so we, maybe we have to review, as a society, uh, the ways we, are, we, we have developed our technology because we create technologies to suit, and to, 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 to suit our needs or to suit our interests, and then sometimes the technologies, without, uh, although they do not have a, a well, they, they may have purpose, purposes on them because all technologies are generated with some interest, but it's not usually, uh, I mean, I, I think that many times we're still too stuck to the Marxist ideas of it's, it's capital against labor. Capital against labor may have been a, an issue 200 years ago. Uh, you know, when I was coming uh, here this morning, I was thinking, if we checked among the 10 richest men in the world, uh, and, I, and I haven't done that, so um, this is not scientific, but it's some, uh, some food for thought so that you think it also. But if you, if you thought of the 10 richest men, how many of them represented capital when they started? How, how many of them only became or, or, or are powerful because they already had money when they started? Right? Uh, I would say that most of them didn't, or they, they, they may have had more money than most people, but still they could have been just another, let's say, what would be called here in Brazil, would be another middle class person. We, in, in Brazil we have this situation in which uh, uh, most people claim that they're middle class, they're actually at least for, for local uh, patterns or local standards, they're rich because uh, if you, if, you, if, you see, if you compare their income to the rest of the population, you will see that they are among the 10% that, that have the, the highest income. So I would say that probably most of these guys were among uh, a, a group that was already, that had already better chances, uh, educational chances and everything than, than most. But still, did they represent the capital? That capital that we usually say, say that rules the world? No. They were either, they, they were innovators, they were creative, they had uh, well, they were either more creative than others, they were more courageous than others, and sometimes you're more courageous than others simply because you do not have the, 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 the capital, right? So uh, we get stuck with the lenses that we put in front of our eyes, and we, we keep repeating and reinforcing ideas of the past. I am sure that if we had Adam Smith and Karl Marx here with us in this class today, and we asked them, well, we gave them, let's say, uh, a year to experiment our society today, and we ask them to re to to, to uh, reassess their own theories. They would be much. They would do a much better job than we have been doing, simply because we we became blinded by their their ideas, right in the past. So there is a possibility for for crowds and for for the collective to become more intelligent, but we we have to get rid of. And, and one of the possibilities that is uh, is proposed here by the wisdom of, of crowds is that we, we get rid of our biases. Uh, or at least, that at least the crowds, as crowds, get re, uh, uh, have those biases cancelled out. So it would be great if those who are still thinking with the ideas of Adam Smith from 350 years ago, or what was uh, 1700s, not, not big, uh, so, uh, or Karl Marx, who came a little later, uh, uh, if, 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 if we had freshened up our own ideas, still thinking that they, they, they had a great uh, value for their propositions of their time, but they were, they were discussing their own times. 
the, the world has evolved to, to an extent that maybe today if we wanted to balance let's say uh, balancing capital against labor and saying that it's capital that, that plays against uh, or that, that capital plays against uh, labor uh, we would have to change this all. It's, it's, it's definitely not going, or, or at least I, I, what, what I would say is that capitalists wants to, wh wh whoever has capital wants to preserve what he or she has, right? They want to pre preserve their, their, their wealth, but they are also, they probably are struggling to do that because new creative people are coming up with new ideas that destroy the ways that they had in the past to generate their wealth. So usually the capitalists from the past they may still be around because capital continues to be very relevant, but they have to to pick back the, the let's say the innovators of time, the, 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 the people who are disrupting uh, the world with new ideas that um, that, that that become important. Uh, well, uh, let me quickly uh, here just uh, uh, go through what we have for today. We will focus mainly on the Surovyek, on Surovyek's book, written in 2005. So uh, in 2005. We, we, we do not think, of, although there's, there, there's a several parts of, let's say, the, the introduction at the, the beginning of the, the book where, uh, where the author tells us about the difficulties that in the past people had had to acknowledge uh, the wisdom of crowds. And maybe if he was reading, writing this now in, in 2023, he would say, well, in many cases, you know what, what, what some authors refer to, to herd um, behavior in the past, which means we follow stupid uh, ideas, we do things in crowds that we wouldn't do alone uh, and, and that he didn't see in his own uh, building of his, of his argumentation here for the book. Uh, we, we see that again now in the social networks, right? Herds being created. Uh, the, the herd mentality uh, is, is problematic because it overemphasizes the ideas of the radicals and th does not provide others with the possibility of showing different perspectives that would lead the, 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 the group to a more um, reasonable uh, result. So we do see herd behavior many times by, by humans. I think everyone here, if I asked each one of you to, to tell me one experience you had in life with a herd uh, behavior, or, or even a situation, maybe if, if I asked you to, to, to explore a situation where you belong to the herd, you would be a little embarrassed. But we all know, I remember when we were teenagers, well, more than teenagers, we were already in uh, at, uh, the engineering school, my colleagues and I, would go to Joaquin's in November, which is the main street here in Curitiba, to drink a beer at, at, at after class, or uh, and we would uh, be doing something uh, that was definitely not any more acceptable then than it is now. But when there was a, a beautiful lady that came across, we would uh, you know we would say things that uh, in group, which is which is which makes it even more cruel, and, and that we, which we would even then. Uh, I mean, I think society has this is something that we have. Uh, become better. I think that we wouldn't behave that way these days, but 30 years ago, I, 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 I feel ashamed today of things that we used to say. Of course, uh, uh, the, the intention, the orientation was we were, we were having fun. We had a few drinks and we were saying things, but we were saying things that I'm sure that we would never say if we were alone. We, would, we wouldn't be courageous to say when we would be, uh, so, so our, even our critical sense would say, no, this is not nice, right? Uh, but uh, but if that was hurt, uh, so this is my confession here, of hair, uh, uh, hair participation, uh, and I, I know that we, if we all think we all did or do things as a hair, hair, hair that we, we wouldn't do alone, uh, we should try and, and 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 think of the possibilities not of the herd but of the hive. The hive is, or like let's say the, the way that bees work, the, the way that like ants work most of the times, right? Uh, because even ants. Uh, biologists have al al already figured out that ants sometimes uh, do things in a, in a way that is not co uh, collectively smart. They, 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 I think that they call it uh, uh, what's circular mills. Uh, when, when colonies of ants, you know that ants find their tracks to, to, their, to their home uh, following uh, the, the track of other ants. They, they, they leave the, their pheromone behind and that provides them with a track and they say, well, many other ants have gone through this path, so this is the right path. This is why we see them usually uh, uh, moving in lines, right? The problem is that sometimes for, for luck or for the lack of luck, they end up making a circular rounds. And if and when that happens, they will be moving in circles until they die because they, they're sure that the, the, the fact that they, they're, they're following their pheromone makes them feel that they're doing the right thing. 
And the more they do it, the more uh, they, they're doing the wrong thing. So this is, the biologists have uh, figured out that sometimes this happens, uh, uh, and, and that's definitely not the wisdom of, uh, of the hive happening there. That, that's when you follow, well, in this case, we can't even say that it's following uh, a herd where there's usually a radical leader or someone that, uh, again, makes the biases become uh, louder than the, the, the actual knowledge. Right? But anyway, uh, so we will, most of the, 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 our time today, we'll spend on Surovieki 2005, but I, I wanted to just advertise some of the other things that are, uh, you'll see there's a lot here in this, in this uh, Moodle page, uh, a lot of things here have been populated even by, directly by, by you, uh, through our wikis and, 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 um, and other forms of interacting here. Sometimes you call my attention to uh, a specific uh, video or to a specific uh, manuscript and, and we brought it uh, to here. So you see there's a lot of, uh, um, let's say, auxiliary material here. Uh, you don't, do not have to go through it all, but uh, it all relates, right? So we have, for example, here I, I included a, a, a short video uh, uh, in which Surovieki is talking a little bit about his ideas. My main purpose here was to show you that Surovieki was an actual person like we are. Uh, he's not a researcher. I, I, I prefer to do this even when we're, we're talking about a researcher that, that we're reading a research paper. Many times we think, gee, these guys are out of space, right? They're people like us who, who, who had to write a dissertation, who had to write a thesis, uh, who, who are professors or students in, in universities and uh, who face the same challenges that we do. So it's good to know that they're made of bones and muscles as, as we are. And this, I always think this is, this is one of the possibilities that we have these days, right? Uh, you, you can find people on the web. Uh, so uh, we have this, this uh, talk here by, by Surovieki. Uh, Surovieki mentions in his uh, book, in fact, I think uh, it actually inspired his book to a great extent, uh, a paper by uh, Galton, which was written back then in 1907. Uh, I was able to rescue this uh, paper, which I believe that it's a, it's a republication uh, of the paper because it, it appears uh, here already in the 40s or so. But uh, Galton was uh, a lord who had those preconceived ideas that, the, uh, that an elite would uh, have a better understanding of politics and it made no sense, that democracy made no sense because allowing the peoples to choose their leaders would, uh, would, 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 would take societies to bad choices. He thought that specialists, that, that was his assumption, that specialists would do better. Uh, my admiration for, for Galton is that he proved himself wrong, but he was able to do that. Because uh, again, when I was, uh, today when I was coming here and I was reflecting about Adam Smith and Karl Marx and saying they were great, they, they were great thinkers, uh, they helped us a lot to develop our world uh, to, to, to better stand in, in some situations, or at least they, they helped us understand why we were not getting there in other uh, instances. But come on, they lived in a completely different environment and we're still stuck to, to their... So people start doing their research, they put their glasses on, and now after they put, put their Marxist glasses on, they can only see the world through those lenses that do not fit us any longer, at least in my perception, right? uh, or, or do not fit the way they, they're used. But you know what? In our research, there is a great tendency that we are going to find what we're looking for. Right? So they will still, still keep re, re, reinforcing those ideas that made sense in the 1800s. Now I'm talking about Marx, not Adam Smith. As uh, if, if they were absolutely the uh, if the world was uh, absolutely the same. Right? And then, of course, they make a lot of sense among themselves. And this also happens with respect to the uh, new liberals in, in economics. And uh, if we were talking about Milton Friedman here, uh, we would have the same kind of problem. Whoever already believes that that's the the only possible way of looking at the world, we'll find reasons to, to do that, to, to keep being like that. So we have a lot of people who claim that they are scientists or that they are trying to do science, and in fact, they're only trying to, to build a religion. Right? Uh, or, or maybe they're, they're not even trying to build a religion. They're so, they're so into that that they do not understand that they're cheating themselves. Right? Gauton, I, I like Gauton, and, and that made me think of, of Smith and, and Marx, because Gauton had his beliefs. He went there with the intent to prove his ideas right. But as soon as he noticed that his ideas were wrong, he was able to, you know, he took his glasses off and said, look, whoa, I have to throw this away 
and start thinking with, I have to find other um, um, scientific perspectives for my studies because my original assumptions are not valid. Right? I, I enjoy that on, uh, on him and I think that we as, as scientists, as researchers, we should always think, uh, I'll be a little bit more like Galton and a little, li uh, a little less like those who turn science into, try to try to turn science into religion and, and, only, and can only do research with the purpose of reaffirming their own dogmas, their own understanding of the world. Um, so, uh, what happened in these uh, Gauton uh, experiments? Uh, well, you all read about it. Uh, uh, he was also very interested in breeding animals, so he, was, he went to this fair where there was, um, they, were, uh, they, they, they were playing a, a bet there on, the, on how much a, an ox uh, weighed. Uh, and, uh, I mean, everyone could take their guess, and at the end of the day, they would see who, who won it. And he, he laughed and thought, well, you know, there are, and by the way, it was not the weight of the, 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 the ox itself, it was the, 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 weight, the weights of the ox after having been uh, turned into meat, right? Uh, which makes it a little more complex, but at the same time, which gives, we would expect, uh, butchers an advantage, right? Maybe it would give farmers an, an advantage. But think, uh, probably farmers have a, a very good understanding of the weight of, a, of an ox, not sliced into, into pieces, right, as, 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 a, well, as a live animal. And butchers hardly ever get to, 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 to know the, the, the weight of the, or, or to experience the, the weight of the whole ox because it's already, it already comes to the butcher and in slices, right? So each one of them has some knowledge that could help figure solving that problem. Um, but none of them is really a, a, a specialist on that, that matter that was, was being um, let's say, discussed at that, at that situation. But Galton thought, and what about, you know, little kids that came to the, to, to the animal sphere just because, with their parents, just because they wanted some sugar candy or a lollipop and they were not even interested in animals and had no ideas. What would their uh, guess, how would their guess contribute to the democracy of, you know, a lot of people together getting to, to know the, 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 the weight of the ox? And, and what about other people, you know, people who lived in the city, the city and thought that milk came in, well, at that stage in 1907, it would, would not come in Tetra Pak boxes, but, I mean, you know, people that had no uh, actual experience with, with those large animals and everything. But he thought, his, again, his assumption was that um, people would be hugely mistaken and that he would get a much better uh, answer to that problem from specialists. Well, in fact, he was not, his experiment did not check the, 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 the specialists alone because all, all the votes were not marked. I am, a, let's say, a farmer, or I am a butcher, or I am, a, 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 let's say, an, um, s s someone who's uh, more uh, knowledgeable about it than others. So he could not do a full experiment. And besides, he didn't need to do that because his idea was to show that the crowd was stupid as, as a crowd. And then he started, uh, when, when he got all the, let's say, the guesses of all people, and he started playing with them, uh, he had this, uh, he got to this incredible conclusion that, yeah, people were mistaken uh, to a large extent. There were people that guessed that the ox was much heavier than it was, and there were others that guessed that the, the, um, the ox uh, was much, let's say, lighter than, than it actually was. But if uh, the average, or if the mean was obtained, their mean was very good. In fact, uh, statistically, uh, uh, probably the best way of getting to the to a central position here is not using the mean, but using the median. Uh, for those of you who, has, who have already studied statistics, uh, this may make sense. The mean, mean well, the mean or the average, uh, uh, and, and, and here if we're t talking about a simple average, it would be you just sum all the all the numbers and divide by the number of observations you had. That would be the mean. The median is the most central observation. So if someone said that the ox weighted 10 kilos, which is obviously for most of us too low, but maybe a little kid would, would have guessed that. And uh, someone else said 5,000 kilos, which uh, is probably what uh, some more knowledgeable people about the weight of an ox would think too much. If we, if, we, if we canceled out the lowest 
and the highest, and then the second lowest, and the second highest, and then the third lowest, and the third highest, until we got to that, that precise uh, uh, number that is right in the middle, that, would be, that, that is the median. Of course, we, we, we can always get to the median if we, had a, if we have an odd number of observations. If we have an even number of observations, uh, then what happens is that you will skip out most of the, 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 the observations, and then you'll get to two observations. And then what we usually do in statistics, we take the average of those two, and that's going to be the median, right? But the, technically, the median is uh, what uh, Galton should be looking at. Well, the median was, I will not remember, but we'll go through the, 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 the book later. I think it was 1,100 and something pounds. And a pound is about a half a kilo, so that would be probably about uh, 600 kilos or so, the, the, the weight of the, the ox. Uh, and, uh, and, and the median was only about, you know, 500 grams away from the, the actual number. So Galton shut his mouth and said, my assumption, I cannot prove my, my assumption uh, right. So, and, and, and he, he, he stopped defending, uh, well, going against democracy as a way of getting to a result. Of course, what happened there in, that, uh, in this guessing experiments, there were no individual interests involved, no one wanted to, to convince others that the, the ox weighed a lot more or much less, so that there were, people acted independently. So this is one condition, this is very important, a condition for, for the wisdom of the crowds to have, to, to, to be valuable. People have to be independent in their, in their assessment. If people are conducted to, a, to, a, to an assessment by the influence of others, then they are, the, the biases of these others, then it's not, a, it's not a, the median any, 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 anymore, it, it, it may be a weighted average where some people are strong enough to influence others and then they, they become much more powerful somehow. In the, so uh, this is one thing that we'll see is that independence is very important there. Right? Um, with respect still to, to, to Galton's idea, there is this very interesting uh, short video uh, by uh, a TV channel explaining exactly Galton's situation and they do that by, you know, with a musician uh, and then they do rhymes, but it's a... Uh, for those of you whose, whose English uh, is a little more sophisticated, I think you will enjoy watching this production here. It's a, I think it's a five-minute video or so, but it, it explains precisely what well, Galton uh, finds out in his uh, study, which is also explained for those who just read Sorovyaki, which is also well explained in the introduction chapter. Okay. Uh, then we also have here, uh, this, this was one of my students from my previous uh, class that read that and thought this was interesting. Uh, like the CIA in the United States, um, it usually works with uh, confidential information. So its agents get a lot of information that has been filtered and, and has been obtained by, by uh, well, it doesn't matter by, by which means the information is obtained, but it's, it's confidential. Uh, and, and, and then they take decisions based on that that will um, uh, affect uh, you know, how, how the, the police will work, the CIA will work there. Uh, and, um, and then they decided to, to, ma to make an experiment and involve uh, regular people like us here uh, in their dec or decisions or, or guesses or assessments of different um, situations that they believe that would, would, would be important to them. And so they, they here they report the situation of this uh, lady who's a pharmacist or something. Uh, so she's no one special in terms. She's not a, uh, definitely not a specialist in any of those questions that were being proposed to her related to, to uh, crime in the city, but also war. Will, will Russia invade Ukraine? Uh, of course, this was years before it. But uh, and they, they found out that the quality of the aggregated information that they got from these uh, non-specialist specialists was just as good as what they had from from their, their, their specialists, uh, which means that maybe they, they should uh, add this kind of, um, of resources in their understanding of the world. Uh, in fact, maybe the, one of the risks that they could have with their agents taking decisions is because the confidential uh, information that they, they had access to biased them towards uh, some decision making. And these people that did not have that confidential information also had a lot of other information that they got from the, let's say, from the environment. Uh, and that was also, so, so it's an interesting experiment. Uh, it's worth uh, reading here. And, and by the way, for those of you who do not want to, to read, you can also listen to it because uh, they had it uh, recorded on audio. Uh, 
Uh, and then this, there's this guy, uh, Louis uh, Rosenberg, who I find to have uh, done some very interesting experiments with what he calls uh, swarm intelligence. Swarm intelligence is very, uh, the, the concept of swarm intelligence seems to be, to me, very close to, to the wisdom of crowds. It's one type of collective intelligence because it's a collective intelligence that is based on large groups of people. Notice, whenever we talk about the wisdom of crowds, crowds are large numbers of people, right? So we're not going to try and use the concepts of the wisdom of crowds uh, in collective intelligence uh, situations where the collective only involves five or ten people, right? That's a small group. It's still collective. Uh, you may still benefit from, from uh, the different perspectives. You may still have some of those assumptions of biases maybe being cancelled out, but small groups uh, have a different uh, dynamic. In, in small groups, we do not have statistics uh, to, to help us cancel out the bias. For example, there's no wisdom of crowds in a team working inside a, an organization, mainly if this organization is hierarchical, because the boss comes to the meeting, there the meeting is held with the intention of uh, reaching some collective uh, intelligence, but what one gets is the reinforcement of the boss's ideas, because usually uh, the employees will tend to agree, well, if that's what the boss thinks that, he, that we should do, yeah, let's, let's help him or her do whatever. I mean, after all, they're paying our, our salary, right? So if they think that this is good, so uh, a, a meeting in a hierarchical organization always leads the boss to believe even when, when, when the boss has this democratic uh, approach of trying to involve everyone in, in the decision, uh, he or she may get to the impression that it was a collective decision, but it was only his, his own ideas being mirrored back or being uh, reflected, uh, and he or she becoming more, more strongly uh, confident that the right thing is being done, when in fact others are only uh, saying yes, boss. Right? Um, in other situations where you have a team that is not hierarchical in the, in the sense that everyone, it's rare in, in traditional organizations because traditional organizations are still based on, on the logic of uh, industrial revolution where one thinks and everyone else acts or performs or whatever. There's always, someone has already thought and then we just do it. Uh, so even if we try to go against that, it's, it's difficult. But anyway, let's assume that we have a group uh, that is does not have a, a, a hier hierarchical established leadership. There's still going to be uh, some leadership that will arise because someone is more fluent on the topic or someone is more, has a, I don't know, a temper that is more like a, more, more, more like being the, becoming the leader. There's someone else who, who prefers to step back and, and help. There, there are people in the world, and in fact, uh, psychologists study this a lot. There are people, you can classify people that are in, in Based on their, on their, on the way that they, they, they act in the world. So there are people that are more like uh, doers. There are people that are more like thinkers. So the thinker will, will be very will be a leader in the, in the, in the phase of conceptualizing, for example, a, a new uh, venture. But after it, it, it's been conceptualized, the thinker is not a doer, right? So that someone else will come. Uh, uh, if we if we could live in a perfect adocracy where leadership changes hands depending on what we need at each instance, uh, we would probably have uh, a lot of leadership shift because each one of us would know, well, you know, I know what I'm good at and I know where I have to step back and, uh, and allow others to, to lead and, and then I will follow because at least we usually don't do that because the, the incentives that, that we have from society are to always try to show that we are right and, uh, and in, in our traditional organizations. But anyway, even in, in, if there is no hierarchical um, definition of leadership in a group, uh, leadership will arise uh, and, and the leader may be a good leader in the sense of uh, assuming control and giving others the, the, the feeling that uh, well, there, is, that there is a direction to go and everything, but notice, it's the leader who's, who's defining the, the direction. Is the leader a good definer of directions or he's only good at putting people to, to go in that direction? Right? Um, so even small, small groups have problems of uh, biases uh, taking over. Right? It may be the bias of the, the leader, 
uh, it, sometimes it may even be the biases of the, the those who are uh, who are more usually more passive. But if you want to be very democratic and you decide, let's vote, and then you end up with the ideas of people that simply had, uh, uh, for whatever reason, were in common, and 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 and, and, and the ideas of, uh, of others were better, but were less, let's say, less uh, well, less influential in a voting situation, for example we're not taking into consideration. So it's very tough. Uh, definitely, what I want to say is, for small groups, forget wisdom of, of the crowds, right? Uh, for small groups, maybe, it is important that, well, try to get rid of hierarchy in this, during the decision so that we can see the different perspectives. But at the same, same time, you need people to be humble enough to understand other people's points of view and make sure that if, make sure that they're open to change. They're open to change their own ideas, right? And they don't stand they're uh, fighting for whatever they, their first uh, idea was. Uh, this is not easy to, to obtain because we, in general, we, we would need a lot of trust for that. We're tr tr and trust in our fragility of not being always right. right? Uh, so even there, for small groups, we'll discuss small groups uh, in the future, but for your small groups, you should have as much trust as possible. This is why, for example, startups, they forgive mistakes uh, much, much more easily than large organizations, right? Because in startups, all that they, they, they can do is try. So it's a try and error uh, uh, kind of a, a approach. If someone tries something and goes wrong, and then that person is punished for that, everyone else will say, well, we don't try anything here. And not trying anything new uh, is only an acceptable uh, behavior in, uh, let's say, in an organization that has already tried in the past and has already succeeded, and now it follows a pattern that is a, that has been a, or that, that was in the past a success pattern, wishing that it keeps being a su success pattern, right? which usually takes organizations to failure also, because the the winning trajectory, the the, the you know whatever made them think that a specific direction is the direction to go, without questioning it later, uh, will lead to, to problems if the environment changes, if uh, or you know uh, if the situation is no longer the same. Um, so this uh, Louis. Uh, it's Louis, uh, L-O-U, Louis Rosenberg, if you want to look for his uh, work anywhere else. Uh, this is mistaken here. Uh, he thought of an interesting uh, way of uh, organizing a swarm in which uh, people did not talk to other people, so there was no way you were, let's say, convincing others of your own ideas because that would generate bias. But they were all um, being able to change their moves depending on what the rest of the crowd was doing. Right? And I think uh, this is uh, something that um, could be a good, good way of, uh, whoever is, uh, decides to study uh, wisdom of crowds, the, what Ro uh, Louis Rosenberg has done in his, let's say, and he, he created a, a software. Unfortunately, the, the current version of uh, UNO is not open any longer, or at least I, I, in the past we could get there and even try to do some experiments uh, with it as they, they, this, this, uh, this is a company and, and they provide uh, us, uh, well, they, they have a software that they, they sell in the market for decisions to be taken in large groups. But I think uh, this second um, video here is a little shorter. Maybe we could watch it because this one, I, I want you to, to see how clever it was. He, he went, he thought of a way of, I mean, he, he was inspired on bees, uh, on, on bees selecting a place for a new hive. Uh, and uh, of course, if the old place usually what happens is uh, sometimes a, a the, the the population of of, of a of a bee's um, hive becomes too too large, and then part of uh, of the bees decide to move somewhere else and start a new hive or something and elect a new queen uh, or, or generate a new queen. Um, and but they have to find a, a good place for that and. Well, I, I, he will tell this better than, 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 than I could, but basically uh, he thought well, all, all bees are equal in the sense that none of them is hierarch hierarchically better than others. And in fact, it's not the queen who, who chooses where they're going. Uh, many times uh, the queen is actually being abandoned by part of the, the, the crowd that, is, that wants to start a new... A new so the, the queen is not, it, it doesn't even know about it. In other times, uh, the, you know, the, the, uh, the, the laborers uh, in, in, the, in the hive uh, have noticed that the place where they are is fragile or whatever, and they will decide to move. And the, the, I believe that the queen can, let's say, can follow them <laughs> or will, will die because the, 
But anyway, I, I'm, I'm not very, uh, I'm not a specialist in, in, in BC, so I better not uh, try to, to say too much and maybe something, say something here that is not uh, accurate. But anyway, the thing here is they all, they're all equal, they come back, and depending on the, the, their enthusiasm with, respe uh, with respect to the place that they found, which the others assess by the way they, they, they do a dance, like the, the bees, you, you, you'll see it, it even shows that. In the, uh, uh, the others will decide, well, it seems that that place is better, uh, a better choice. And by, by working that way, they usually make very good decisions of uh, where to move their, their hives to. So let's see if this will work. It's a presentation. It, it, it looks pretty much as, it, it, as if this is a conference. Yeah, it is a conference presentation. See, it's uh, IEEE I, I, Human Swarm Blended Intelligence 2015. Uh, one thing that we will do here, uh, I can't, guys, I cannot, uh, uh, I, I cannot make sure that, that well, I, I cannot send the audio from here to you, unfortunately, the way I'm doing. So what I will do, I will send you the, the link. We will all start together here. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that this, we, we can start together and maybe at the end we, we, we stop and comment. I will not, I'll not stop during the, the, the video presentation, right? We, we, we can talk about it a, a, at the end. So I will just send you this link. It's a 20, about 25 minute video. So just start watch on your on your own there, and we will watch here in the class. And as soon as after these twenty five minutes, we 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 rejoin. I think it's it's going to be the, the easiest way to do it. All right, uh, think of uh, this uh, Louis uh, Rosenberg, uh, Louis Rosenberg's approach here as it, it's definitely based on uh, the collect the the, the the let's say the, the wisdom of crowds, but it it takes it one level further, right? Because the collectivity uh, uh, the, the wisdom of crowds tends to to depend on a, a picture, a shot of a moment, uh, it, it ends up being almost like if it was a poll, or a, and, a, and it has to be a poll where no one influences each other's ideas. But the thing is, uh, uh, a, a poll, a poll leads us to one sort of uh, democracy in our decision that is that ends up being the tyranny of the majority. Right? In fact, that's the kind of democracy that we've seen in a polarized world. Uh, we have we usually have those two polls depending on how big they are, it may be 50-50. So 50% will be imposing their ideas on, on, on the others. What uh, Rosenberg is trying to propose here is uh, uh, alternatives that maybe could even lead to a situation. For example, think of our elections here in Brazil, right? where we had 50-50. If, if it was, um, if, we were, if, if, we were, if we had an election uh, um, system that allowed us to, to use uh, Louis Rosenberg's um, system here, it would probably allow us to have a, the third path or the third, right? Because the two very polarized uh, uh, groups would be one against the other and, and they would neutralize each other and we could possibly... So, uh, in fact, the other day, Antonio and Christopher, who's not, who was a student from last year, were thinking about what are ideas that we can develop in, for... A, uh, Antonio is a, in, an undergraduate student. What are ideas that we can develop in a... For, for, for our projects to find for the, the end of the course uh, project here, the TCC, right? Trabalho de conclusão de curso. And this could be an, uh, 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 an alternative to, to explore ideas like Louis Rosenberg and see how they can still improve something that is already good. Democracy is already good in the sense that uh, it allows the, let's say, a majority to, to, to win. But notice that uh, uh, Rosenberg has several points here that are important. Our democratic systems of today they do not lead to consensus. They do not lead to, to, to a situation where we feel that we, will, we are all part of the decision making. I mean, we are all part of the decision making when we vote, uh, but uh, we, 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 don't, we, don't, we, we don't get to that kind of uh, uh, solution that the bees get, right? where they all end up agreeing. Right? So maybe this is a way of, if we start developing collective intelligence, or, or, or let's say at least this, notice, uh, let, let's use the term, this concept here, he calls, Swarm intelligence. Uh, so let's try to be precise with the terms that we use. It's it make a little difference of swarm intelligence and the wisdom of crowds, because swarm intelligence is, let's say, one way of uh, of uh, dealing with the wisdom of, of crowds. So maybe swarm intelligence is part of wisdom of, of, of crowds, but wisdom of crowds is not necessarily swarm intelligence, right? Um, 
So um, I guess uh, this is it with uh, respect to, just wanted to give Antonio this hint that maybe they find inspiration there and they say, well, let's look for all Louis Rosenberg's videos and let's explore, uh, you, you know, it, it was, uh, when we clicked there to get the, the video, it showed it, uh, the, the name of the, of the company there. Let's explore exactly what they're doing. Let's see wh where we can develop a, a, a something here that is similar to that in a, I mean, the, the concept is very simple. And in fact, again, notice how we can derive uh, proposals for solutions for human problems, looking at what uh, some other animals that many times we find less interesting than we are, the way that they act, they, they, they perform, okay? Um, all right, there are a few things we, we are, we only have some about 10 minutes. I, I, w I just wanted to check a few things that are important in the reading that you have already done. Uh, and I'm, I'm here going through the pages of my scanned uh, book. I have already emphasized uh, Galton's virtue. Uh, he was not blind to the truth of his own data, right? Many times what we do in our research, uh, when our data shows something that, is, that does not uh, get us to the conclusion that we wanted to, to get. We think that the data is wrong, we think that uh, the, the, the sample was biased, we try it again until we get to prove that those ideas that we already had are good, right? That's horrible science, but that's the science that we, we all tend to do. Yesterday I was talking to, to another group and saying that even our literature review is usually biased because and, and, and it's not intendedly biased. It's not that we are trying to cheat the others or, or cheat ourselves. But there are things, things that we like we like because, most times we like something because it reinforces a belief that we already had. We should start liking things, and maybe this is an effort that we have to do, we should start liking ideas that challenge our previous ideas. And I like that because it made me think different to what I thought before. Ideas that only make us think more strongly, the same way as we did before, do not make us grow. Right? We, I mean, we're, we just become more of what we already are, which is usually stupid. I mean, we are all stupid too. Uh, but when an idea challenges our, our, our current way of thinking, that provides us with, uh, with uh, some growing in terms of, of knowledge, even if that hurts us, right? In the sense that it, it makes us less strong in the beliefs that we had. Uh, I usually think that uh, the, smart, the smartest people I know, or the people that, that have more wisdom, do not act much. They're not very active in the sense of trying to impose their ideas because, well, they, they know it's not like the first, they, they, they know that there's a lot that they don't know, right? So they're more conscious about their lack of knowledge. The more someone is convinced about their knowledge, probably, uh, probably in most cases, the less knowledge that person uh, has because that person doesn't even give itself the chance of learning more except for learning more about the reinforcements uh, or learning more about the same, right? Um, the the uh, Suruviaki talks about a little bit about the, the sufficing logic, or uh, which is usually referred by what well, we usually think of uh, Herbert Simon, uh, who who coined the term uh, boundedly rational, uh, which I usually give a an example. We we we, we humans know that we will not, never get to perfection in our decisions, uh, so the the optimum uh, the, the optimum uh, decision uh, will not be reached, so we are happy with getting to good decisions. Uh, and an example to do uh, that I give for that uh, is maybe one of the most important uh, decisions that we have to make in life is choosing a partner, right? Of course, if we're thinking that that's going to be a long-term decision, uh, many people have given up that, uh, that concept, but if you think that it's going to be a long-term decision, uh, it should be optimal. But it's impossible for us to, 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 do, to, take, to take an optimal decision there for several reasons, which are related to uh, Simon's uh, concept of uh, the, the bounded, uh, boundedly rational. Uh, we only have access of, to a sample. We cannot uh, evaluate the whole population. Right? There are uh, some other 8 billion people on Earth, uh, so any of them could be your perfect partner. Uh, but uh, we, we, we know that we will not be able to, to, you know, to assess, to evaluate all of them and say, well, that's the perfect one. So first thing, first problem there that we have in our decision making is about the, the impossibility of assessing the whole population, of only being able to deal with uh, samples. There's time constraints also, right? Uh, there are people that keep their whole lives looking for their partner and then, well, they die before, it, before they get there, possibly because of the first uh, uh, problem that we have. Uh, we do not have 
time to assess all the possible alternatives. And there's a third of the, uh, situation that also makes this choice very difficult. The object that is being assessed, that partner to, to be, also wants to cause an impression, right? So the, we're not analyzing an object, we're analyzing uh, what's it, uh, what that object wants to, to, to be seen as, uh, which is usually an, a, a short-term effort, because in the long, long term we can only be ourselves, we cannot be what we pretend to be. Okay? Uh, so the decision of choosing uh, a wife, a husband, a partner in general, uh, depends on this uh, sufficing logic. Decisions that we take alone will always depend uh, on that. The decisions that we take together, the wisdom of crowds, uh, we'll, we'll take everyone's experience. Of course, we, we won't, won't involve the whole population of Earth to help us decide on our uh, partner, but, uh, but of course, everyone in the world knows a sample. Uh, again, not to, to, to help on that problem, but there are many problems that are problems that would concern everyone and that could take uh, into account the, the, the help of others and then allow us to get closer to an opti optimal solution. Um, um, Sorovieki claims that there are three kinds of problems that we can deal with um, when we, we use the wisdom of uh, crowds. The first of them is, the, is cognition problems. Cognition problems, um, for, for cognition problems, we usually are looking for definitive solutions. Uh, and after we've taken that and we decided on that, we cannot even, I mean, others, other alternatives could also have been good, but we'll never know, because it's a choice that you make or a, a decision that you take for something, and after you take the decision, it's, it's made. You can't come, uh, go back, or the costs of going back are, are too high. So uh, you will not, not ever be able to, to confirm if that was actually the best solution, but still taking. Now, getting a decision that involves the crowds may even make uh, what, what uh, Louis Rosenberg says, may, may, may make it more appealing to the crowds. When you, involvement is important, right? Involvement in the process. For example, I don't, I don't feel as included, although po a poll like uh, we have in, in the elections for, for a president, for example, or a poll to decide if the university uh, professors are going on strike, for example, it is inclusive in the sense that uh, usually you say, well, I take part of that, and then even if my idea was not the one that prevailed, we act as a body. Right? So many people say, well, I, I was included because I usually uh, tend to think that I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't feel included uh, in, a, in a country's election like the one, the one we, we had, for example. I, I couldn't vote. The last time that I was able to vote, that I felt uh, that I had an alternative was in 88. Right? After that, I never voted. I, well, I, I always voted. I canceled my vote for president all other times, because it, I said, the alternatives are not, do not, uh, of course, this is a very personal way of uh, looking at, the, at, the, at the, the alternatives that were being given, but I, for many times, I had that impression, that feeling, that, well, people will make me try, make, uh, will try to make me feel included simply because of, I voted, but they, they don't give me any option that I find reasonably uh, acceptable. So how included am I? Right? Um, but, so, so, but, but anyway, uh, going back to the, the cognition problems, we, we make decisions, uh, as, uh, and those decisions, after made, we can assess, well, we can even say, well, this seems to have been a good decision, but we'll never know, because the decision was taken, and we changed the world based on that, or we, you know, we changed the environment, we cannot go back to the previous environment, it's not a situation where you can do a lab test, try the different possibilities. Uh, there are other problems that are what, what um, Surviecki calls the coordination uh, problems. Coordination problems involves people with uh, maybe complementary resources or complementary needs. Uh, I get a, let's say, a, a coordination problem solved, for example, when I can match someone who needs a lift to someone who, who has a car and is going the same direction, right? So, uh, and, and, and maybe uh, put it, uh, that, that, that would be beneficial for both because uh, the person was going alone now he or she has someone to talk to and, and the, the time is going to be more, more, interesting, more, more interesting we spend, for example. Uh, we have coordination problems when uh, many different tasks are necessary. Uh, they depend somewhat one on, on the other, but they have to be done individually. So each one does their own bit, but you need to coordinate those things. Uh, 
uh, this can also uh, be uh, a coordination problem. Um, and we have cooperation problems. Cooperation problems would be those in which we have to work out on a solution uh, together. Right? Uh, there are different kinds of problems and possibly we will also uh, find out that uh, different kinds of collective intelligence, even of sub sub subsets of, of the wisdom of the crowd maybe, better for each one of these kinds of, uh, of problems. Uh, and then uh, maybe the, the last I don't want to get to, we'll have a break soon, but uh, let's talk about the conditions for the, the wisdom of crowds. Three important conditions, essential, otherwise there is no intelligence, uh, no, no wisdom of crowds. Diversity, by the way, this is one of the reasons why organizations want diversity so much these days. Diversity allows for different perspectives, different perspectives allow us for killing the biases uh, of others. One, one, the biases of each group or, or of each person cancels the others. So diversity is essential. Independence, uh, and notice here, why is independence important? Because when we don't have independence, we, we may get uh, all, all sorts of distortions. Uh, biases will, will, will prevail simply because there are groups that are person, people or, or groups that are biased and they, they influence, influence others, and then that bias is not going to be canceled. In fact, it's going to be emphasized. Uh, maybe this is one of the problems that we have today in the formation of echo chambers uh, and polarization. It's not, they're not independent people in the sense that they're all already, um, they, they all think in a very coordinated way, which uh, leads to reinforcement instead, reinforcement of the biases, possibly also reinforcement of the virtues, but, uh, but definitely reinforcement, reinforcement of the biases. And a third uh, um, characteristic that uh, Surobiecki points out has been important for the, here for, for the wisdom of crowds is the decentralization. Right? Uh, it's uh, each one of us being able to present their perspective. Pulverization, uh, sorry, that, that, that's not, I don't think that that's a term in English uh, for the call. Um, granularization, a lot, a lot of you know, reaching out to each of the humans that can contribute to that problem. These uh, 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 three uh, um, characteristics or, or conditions, let's say, for the wisdom of crowds is presented early in the, in the book. And then later on, uh, Sorovieck also talks about aggregation, which, uh, of course, ag aggregation will be as, as, as more important as we go into, for example, the, the kinds of, of, of um, collective intelligence decisions that involve, for example, coordination coordination of different different people on each uh, each one is doing a, a little bit of something then we have to aggreg aggregate the results afterwards uh, to make sense of the, the, the wisdom of the crowd will come from the aggregation and not from the um, but of course there are other these are conditions but there are other things that need to be there for example you need to have uh, certain rules or certain ways of um, allowing that order is contained so that you know that the, the Maybe those assumptions of diversity, independence, and decentralization are not taken away uh, by someone who speaks loudly. And in fact, to, to, to keep independence, people should not. One assumption is that people should not talk to each other. Right? The wisdom of crowds, uh, in, in, in its more radical form, would be: we don't want people to share information with they, 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 information that they haven't shared in the past. Right? We want to each one to deal with what they have now, because otherwise they will be transferring others. They, they will be convincing others of their their points of view. Notice, uh, um, uh, even uh, in, in Louis Rosenberg's uh, attempt to get to swarm intelligence, he still uh, does provide independence. I, I know if you paid attention to the fact that when the people are playing, they, they have their magnets there to pull the piece of glass towards the direction that they want. They only see their magnets. They see the glass moving, but they don't see all the, the other magnets. If they saw all the other magnets, they would be already think, gee, everyone is pulling the other direction. I may be wrong, or whatever, right? They, they are already influ influenced by the others. Of course, they know that there is, uh, the thing is going in, in one direction, but they, they, they don't know if that's people going, uh, 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 pulling directly in that direction, or if it's the, res uh, the result of uh, forces. And so notice that uh, this is why I think that uh, the swarm intelligence as proposed by, by Louis Rosenberg is, uh, is a, a kind of, of wisdom of crowds, but it is because it is dependent on diversity, uh, uh, independence, and decentralization. You will see that some other forms of collective intelligence do not need that. In fact, uh, a lot of our collective intelligence 
uh, results from we being capable of influencing others, right? But it's a diff then, then it's a different theory, theory a different uh, uh, perspective. Um, so I think uh, uh, with that, uh, that's uh, probably the, what, what uh, was more important for us to say about this, the beginning of this book. We will keep uh, working on this book uh, for next class, so we will read chapters two to six. We're not going to do the whole book here because otherwise we cannot uh, deal with other approaches to collective intelligence, but I even uh, I, I wish if you have time, and if you can, uh, read it all. The idea of reading bits of, uh, of the work of different authors is to show you that there is more than you can do towards that, uh, and, and I hope you do that. So what we'll do now, uh, let's have a, a, a break uh, until maybe 10.30, and then we, we come back and start working on our on our um, on our forum. In our, well, is that okay with you? I don't know if anyone. Uh, I, I see that the guys here are, are okay, but do you have any questions, you guys that are online? Any, anything? To, no. Uh, I, I keep telling you. I, I know that sometimes you're sharing information in the the chat uh, because of the, the way I configured here. I don't have a, a very big screen. I don't see the whatever you're doing on chat. So it's always important that you open your mics when you have a question that you want to direct to me. Of course, it's always. Uh, the, the collective intelligence also involves you uh, chatting among yourselves, no problem about that. Uh, you can use the chat as much as you want, but know that it's something that will uh, be, be an interaction among yourselves. If you want to call my attention to whatever you do on, on the chat, please, uh, someone needs to, to open your mics. Okay? Um, all right, okay, so we'll come back at uh, 10.30, well, Kurichiba time, uh, whatever other time, 9.30, 9.30 or 8.30 or whatever for, for others, uh, uh, but in 20 minutes from now. Ah, and by the way, there's there's one thing that it's important me to for, for me to say here before we we we, we leave for the, the break. Uh, we will, in fact, maybe we, we should do, do we should we should do that before. Uh, I was saying that we, we're going to do our own uh, polls here. Um, let's do it before the break, if you don't mind. So we, we'll take the break a little little later. Okay. Hope, hope nobody has gone yet. Uh, I have uh, three polls that I wanted to, to to do here, and maybe it's better that I do before the break because then I, have, then I have time during the break to organize the, day, the, the results and present them to you, right? This is going to be uh, Suruvieki's style of wisdom of crowds. Um, I have an original survey here. For those of you who are online, you can, uh, you can go to bit.ly, uh, dot, or maybe, I can even, maybe even for you who are online if you wish. There, it's bit.ly underscore, uh, slash underscore wisdom of crowds. But I've also included here, for those who are here, if you want to photograph that, and there's a QR code here. Uh, and I will include, for, the, for you who are online, I'll include it in, in the chat, the, the link. Maybe this is... Uh, do you want to... Yep, go on, go on. I'll include the link uh, in the chat, all right, for you guys, so I'll just need... Does it work? No? No. I, okay, so well, uh, uh, let, let me just include the link in the chat. Maybe it's here. For some reason, in our screen, there it's a little squeezed. Check that is it. I just saw there that uh, Fernando was asking if the Mentimeter could be a version of UNU. Well, the, the Mentimeter is definitely a, a way of expressing the wisdom of crowds. Uh, but notice that the idea of UNU is you, you, you have time. Uh, people respond to, to the others in real time, right? So it's, I mean, in uh, uh, Mentimeter and uh, what, what it does, it gives you a shot of a, the situation. So, it, so it, it represents the wisdom of crowds, but it doesn't represent what Louis Rosenberg is proposing in his model where he, 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 there's, people are interacting there in real time until they reach a, a solution to the problem that is a, let's say, a consensus solution, not in the, in the sense that everyone agrees precisely with that, but uh, with the fact that... <laughs> no worries. Yeah, we, we're, we're, we're having some feedback here. Celso, um, uh, your mic is on. Oh, okay, you're there, yeah, sure. Yeah. I, I thought that... Uh, I was thinking that. Okay, uh, so again, uh, Mentimeter is is not a version of you know it's it's a version of Windows of course. Were you are you being able to 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 fill in that 
which, and of course, I want you to do it with your with your own ideas. Do not look on the, on Google, right? It's, the idea is not not being uh, showing that we are smart. It's showing that we have our own whatever whatever biased idea we have in our mind. And as soon as you finish that, before we get to the break, I have two other. I have two other polls for you to answer. It's actually one other poll for you to answer. Uh, either one of these two, right? Poll A is going to be answered by those with names, pre-names, starting from A to J. And poll B, for those with names, or pre-names, the first name, right? Uh, starting from K to Z. Okay, just uh, included here. First, I hope it's uh, not too small there, but you, and you can see I just included a few of the results for the responses to, to your questions. I decided to include also the answers from people who were with me in last year's course, because, I mean, although we're not doing this at the same time, the questions I asked them were exactly the same, and this makes us a, a, a slightly larger crowd. Remember one thing, although this, this has not appeared in Sorovieki's conditions or, or for, for the wisdom of crowds, uh, he has not talked about the size of the crowd, but he, he didn't talk about the size of the crowd because he's talking about a crowd, and a crowd is more than, you know, the, some 20 students that we have in this group here, right? Uh, so even summing up with uh, people from last year, it's still we are a very, let's consider that we are a very small crowd, and this do, does not necessarily work as well for us as it would if we were uh, a, a, significantly, a significantly larger crowd with respect to the statistics here. But anyway, uh, so this is why you see some people here that's participated on the 20 third of uh, June last year, and you're, you're these guys down here. I had to do a, a little fixing here, just uh, for example, I think this first answer that we had here, the guy had written 91 for the year, so I, I, I did, did little fixings like that. Sometimes you wrote 60 million, for example, then I, you know, I, 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 I'm sure that I have not um, changed it, your intentions, but I, I did have to tweak a little bit with the, with the numbers here, which means that whenever we have raw data, we have to have a look at them. Uh, because uh, sometimes uh, it's clear that wh wh whenever I, I mean I ask here the population of Sydney in Australia in millions of people and then someone wrote whatever number millions right they, they included the, the, the millions here it was definitely I, I can assure that the intention of the, the, per the, the person was not having those additional six zeros there okay so I, I did a little li very little cleaning but sure that uh, I'm sure that I didn't change anything let's have a look at, at the results we got here then uh, the mean or the average uh, for the what is the typical cruise speed of a Boeing 777? Well, what Google tells me, and I, I'm assuming that it's true, uh, is 920. Uh, what you uh, gave us answers was between uh, between 296. Well, this was very precise, uh, but very wrong. Uh, and uh, and a thousand it seems to be. Maybe I should include the minimum and the maximum as well, and you would see the effect of the minimum and the maximum in the in the, mean, the calculation of the mean and average. Let me do that very quickly here. Just include two lines here. Uh, I will include the minimum and the maximum. And So let's see. Um, notice that uh, uh, in, in this case, uh, we, well, uh, what, what could have happened, and the reason why we usually tend to think that it's important to work with the median, not the mean, for the wisdom of crowds, is that sometimes we have what we call outliers, those people who are far out in one direction or the other, and they do affect, they, they, they could affect the, the mean, they would not affect the median, right? Uh, in fact, that, that problem, for example, I think, I don't, I don't remember which was, but for example here, for what is the population of Sydney in Australia in millions? Let's say if this person here had written 60 million like that, okay? Is it 60 million? I think it is. Uh, notice that it would affect a lot the, the, the mean, 
but it will not affect uh, the median, right? Even being a number completely out of uh, proportion. Uh, but anyway, uh, we can still uh, notice that here, considering that the minimum for the, popula well, the population of Australia, according to Google, and this is according to Google last year, so it may have changed a little bit. And besides, according to Google, where in Google, I don't know, I just asked, guys and told me, tell us what the great oracle tells, uh, uh, has as, as being the truth. Uh, it, came, it came out as 5.3 million inhabitants. Notice that the minimum uh, that appeared here was one, the maximum was 80 million, uh, uh, and then the, the mean was 12 million, probably carried, uh, or pushed a little to the top by the 80 million, and also there's a 60 million here, right? Uh, you know, not, not even the whole population of Australia is, I think the whole population of Australia is probably some 20 something million. It's, 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 the, it's very, very low densely inhabited, that country and continent. Uh, the median was 3.5. We were, f we were, uh, notice that here. In, in, in none of these we were really sharp in our, in our answer. But again, if we check here for the typical cruise speed of the Boeing, considering that the median was 800, and the right answer is 920, so the median is 120 away from the maximum. Right? Uh, let's see how many people did better than that. This, this one did better, okay, this, this would be a better, let's say, this guy would be a better guesser than taking the median. I'll, I'll show this in, in green here. Well, this guy here would be a better guesser. This would be the same, this would be a better guesser, okay, so. Well, this, this guy, I will not include the one that is the same, okay, the same is, that will keep to the, uh, this guy would be a better guesser in this one, individually, right? Let's see if there are any better guessers here at the top. Oops, sorry. This guy is a better guesser, this one. And this one. All right, uh, well, we, we had several better guesses for this first uh, question than uh, the mean. But at the same time, notice, so how, how many there were? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight better guessers. Eight out of uh, 25. Uh, the problem with the crowds is that we never know who the better, uh, the better guesser is, right? So if I had to just say, well, I will either get the, uh, work with the mean or I would choose someone randomly I would have a, a better chance of sticking to the mean, right? Because only one third of the guesses were better than the other. But still, uh, in this case here, um, uh, I, I didn't get very impressed with, with our results, right? Uh, let's see what happens here with the population of Sydney. Uh, it's 5.3. The, the median was 3.5, which means that we are three, uh, to 1.8 away. Who was better? These guys, these two guys here were better. This was about the same. Maybe a little better, right? This was better. Check it with, check if I'm doing this right. I'm just doing very, very quickly here, but I think this is okay. Let's see. Seven is. Seven is better, it's 5.5, right? So this is better. So again, here, I'm not too surprised to, to you know, but again, I think this is, these are the ones that are better than, oh, uh, no, but we, we, we as a group, we, oh yeah, five is, five is also better. Anyone else? Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, three, six. Six out of, it's not 25, it's actually 24, right? Because the first uh, line is three, uh, uh, six out of 24, again, uh, uh, one fourth. So again, we would do better with, if we, if we don't know who the specialist is, it's better to go with the, me the, the, the median than going with uh, trying to, try, try to go with the idea of whoever speaks louder in the group. Many times, uh, whoever speaks louder may be, may be good at imposing his ideas, but not, not necessarily of having good ideas. Look at this one here, we nailed. I didn't know that, uh, well, I, I, I have known that Nirvana released this album in, in, in 91 for 
quite a few years since I, I read uh, sort of Yankee the first time, right? But, uh, but you nailed here, right? Uh, the median was precisely 1991. How many guessers were as good as the, as the median? Uh, well, this guy, you, you couldn't do better, but this guy knew that this, this guy was a specialist in Nirvana. There's another specialist here, another specialist here, and there's not another specialist here. And those were the guys who were as good as the mean, not better than the mean, as good as. So here, here we, we nailed. Uh, what about Mamona's Assassinas? Let's check what our answers were. So Google's, well, yeah, Google says it's 1996. The median was 1996, so we nailed it. Uh, but notice the mean one and mass one here. Okay, 2015. Who would, who would have said that? Uh, maybe, you know what? We have among ourselves, of course, we have to, to, to know that there, there are people here who do not even know who Mamona's Assassinas are. But notice one thing, this is a, 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 an interesting thing in, 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 uh, uh, about humans. We take a guess. Even, of course, if our guess is absolutely uninformed, if we don't have any uh, information, the chances that our guess is wrong are very strong. But we still many times take a guess. It's almost like, you know, when you ask someone for directions on the street, and they say, keep going. They don't know, but they say, yeah, keep going, because they don't want to say that, that admit that they don't know. Uh, and it's not because they want to, you know, have a go at you and, and uh, they, 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 they want to do you harm. It's just that they're too embarrassed to say that they don't know, so they say, oh, keep going. Um, not, but again, as a, a team, we did well. I, I realized here that there was only, well, we had, in fact, this year we had the, everyone filled in all answers, almost as if you were obliged to. But you weren't, right? I mean, uh, you could leave blank. It was not, I mean, you have to, to fill this in, otherwise you cannot go for it. Last year, I had someone who, who didn't dare, uh, you know, having a crew on, on where, when Nirvana released uh, Nevermind. Uh, and last year, we also had someone who didn't have any clue about the population of Sydney and decided to keep quiet. This, these are things that I believe we'll have to start learning to do uh, if we are able to, as, men, uh, as a society, to develop into a more collectively intelligent group. We should simply say, I don't know. So it's, it's that, that adocracy of, well, this time I hope that someone who has a better knowledge than me leads because I will only introduce noise here. I cannot introduce any knowledge. I keep telling you uh, that, that uh, grandmother is um, saying that we have two ears, one mouth, but we, we definitely want to use our mouth a lot. Right? Maybe it's, there's times that we should say, Let, let's see what others have to say about it. Okay, this was our first experiment. This was the exper uh, a wisdom of crowds experiments. Uh, with, uh, I, I believe, with respect to the questions that we asked, uh, even being a, a relatively small group, we can say that we, we are unbiased. Right? Now, we have two other polls that I did with you for group A and group B, where you were biased. Let's see what happened here. Not going there. Oh, okay, so this, so this is uh, the first group, uh, uh, for the first group to which I asked the population of Turkey, these were the answers that were obtained. Of course, this group is much smaller still because we split the class in half, so we only have 10 responses here, uh, and, um, and three, three were from last year and the others are from this year. You're a larger group than last year. Uh, and notice that the answer to this question was the mean was 76.4, and the median was 80. Okay. And then I asked, to the other group, I also asked, what is the population of Turkey? And their answers, well, the, the, the average here, the mean was 38, the median was 26. Could anyone check what the population of Turkey is? Just look, I, I didn't include the Google answer here, but let's, Google, Google can tell us. Uh, 84 million. 84 million, okay. So, let's say the truth is 84 here, and the truth is also 84 here. It's not a matter of why uh, group A performed better than group B, it is really why did group A perform differently to group B, considering that I asked exactly the same question? I mean, I mean, you're all graduate students with, of course, 
maybe one of you has already been to Turkey or, or has read a, a, a manual, an almanac, in which they told the population of Turkey yesterday. Uh, we all have our biases. Uh, we may think that it's larger or smaller, but what's, what was the problem in this case? The problem was the first question that I asked you. For group A, I asked you, do you think, well, let me see if I can change this here, do you think that the population of Turkey is more or less than 100 million inhabitants? And for group B, I asked, do you think the population of Turkey is more or less than 30 million inhabitants? This first question, it, it, they're, they're, they're two completely isolated, independent questions, but the answer to the first one anchored your answer to the second one. Those who, for whatever, whatever reason, had already thought, oh, well, let's say the number 30, asked you for an opinion, and after you gave that opinion, uh, your, ne your ne next question was not an unbiased uh, question at all. So see, when, when we say that wisdom, the wisdom of crowds, relies on unbiased people, see how easily they can, they can very quickly be biased. Right? Uh, unfortunately, and, and this, this makes it difficult for you to be sure that what you're getting is the wisdom of crowds with, that, with biases, biases cancelling out each other because we may have been influenced for whatever something that happened the previous day uh, something that happened uh, well a, a question like this that was intentionally or not intentionally posed right before um, this is uh, uh, there is this uh, this uh, Arabic uh, tale that says that once one of those uh, I don't know how they call it in, in English I don't know how you call the, the, the kings of those Arab uh, tribes, and, but anyway, one of them had had a dream, and he dreamed that uh, the king dreamed that he had lost all his teeth. You know? And of course, as he believed that dreams uh, usually brought uh, information about the future, the king invited uh, uh, a dream, what we call a dream interpreter or whatever, to come and tell him what that image of him without any te teeth in the mouth uh, meant. And uh, then this, this guru, this uh, wise man that came to, which ended up not being very wise, told the king, well, this is, this is a disgrace, uh, majesty. It means for each teeth, each tooth that you lose, uh, that you lost in, in your dream, that meant that you lost a person in your life, someone died. So each tooth means, each tooth that you, you, you didn't have in your dream, means that you saw someone that you loved die, which means that you, you're going to see a lot of, uh, uh, you know, your loved ones, die before you. I'm sorry to give you such bad news. Uh, of course, the king was mm, not very happy with that uh, interpretation of the dream and uh, told his guard to kill the, the wise man, or the not so wise man. And then he called another dream uh, teller to come and, and interpret his dream. And this guy said, Majesty, you're really lucky. You're going to leave more than most people in this, you know, around you. And then he was really pleased and gave the second we, uh, dream interpreter, dream uh, teller, a um, hundred coins of gold, uh, gold coins. And then someone else was, that asked, what was the difference between the two interpretations of the dream? It was only the way it was taught. So many times, depending on how, even how a question is posed, will lead people to, to different answers. And, 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 and the wisdom of crowd may be manipulated because of that risk of bias. Right. So, this is, this, uh, again, we'll, we'll be discussing over this course the possibil different possibilities of dealing with collective intelligence, uh, but we always have to know that it's not easy. If it, if it, if it were easy, uh, every, everyone would be doing uh, this all the time. There, there are problems there, right? Uh, someone may think also, so the wisdom of a crowd may allow someone to make billions of dollars in the stock exchange. I believe so, right? Uh, for example, if Google checks in real time the names of the assets that people are checking on Google, it will have a good measure of the interest of people on Petrobras, Vale, or whatever company here in Brazil, for example, uh, and, uh, and we'll, uh, probably someone doing that will probably be ahead of others in decision making. So the wisdom of crowds is going to be there. But at the same time, at the same time we have to check what 
what is the risk of whatever is happening being biased by, by other things that are happening, okay? Any, any questions here, guys? Any comments about these spreadsheets or the results that we obtained? All right, I will make these um, this, um, spreadsheets here. Uh, I'll, I'll, share, I'll share the results with you after class today so that you examine them again. Uh, but it's basically, uh, I mean, very quick, very, very simple answers analyzed with very simple statistics, just the median and the mean, uh, and already providing us with some, some, some understanding, let's say, of, uh, of how a, a crowd thinks about something. Okay? And, and, and not only how a crowd thinks, but also what, what is the fact behind uh, those, those opinions that a crowd is giving. Right? Again, you were a little far uh, away in, in the... Well, not, not, not really, you're not far. You, you're not, no, notice that the answers that you gave for the first two questions here, they were not bad, considering the, the, the median. Considering that you, you thought that the, the speed of a, a Boeing 777 was 800 and 920, I can assure you that a, a Boeing can fly at that uh, speed with no problem, right? So you, if, if you had to, let's say, if, 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 if the crowd had to take control of, of, of the plane, and uh, the information that they need to, to include there in the panel was at what speed should, should we fly? Choosing 800 would be good. Choosing 296 maybe would not be very good, right? Uh, and, and maybe choosing, uh, well, we didn't have extremes to the other end, uh, but uh, would pro probably be unfeasible. And the same thing here, you know, 3.5 uh, million is sort of, it shows that we're talking about a metropolis, but we're not talking about uh, a, a Sao Paulo or Tokyo or Mexico City, we're talking about a metropolis maybe the size of Curitiba, a little larger than Curitiba. But you, let's say the, the, the median here, as, as a group, we understand that Sydney is a, let's say, a middle-sized uh, metropolis in the world. Um, so we didn't uh, do bad, but look look at how good we were here. We definitely get, get gold medals for these two, which seemed that the two more, the, the, for me, it would be the two most difficult ones for me to nail as a person, right? The others, I, w I would at least feel confident that I would get sort of clo closer than this one, this two here, maybe. I don't know. All right, okay, so what we will do now, we will get to our, in Moodle, we have for, for today, we have again um, a forum in which I want to maybe write what called you, uh, what we didn't talk about, the, the lost submarine and, and, and some of those stories that appeared in the book. Uh, but I, I just want you to, to tell us what impressed you the most and maybe why. Uh, and maybe interact a little bit with what others say that called their attention the most. Uh, so, so let's do that. We'll be here from from now for, for another hour or so uh, doing that. But we, we won't be. I mean, I'll, I'll keep uh, the, the Google Meet going. If anyone has questions or anything, you just have to to ask. And but, but I'll, I'll we'll, we'll focus on that now. Okay. <laughs>
Okay, just uh, included here first. I hope it's uh, not too small there, but you, and you can see I just included a few of the results for the responses to, to your questions. I decided to include also the answers from people who were with me in last year's course because I mean although we're not doing this at the same time questions I asked them were exactly the same and this makes us a, a, a slightly larger crowd remember one thing although this this has not appeared in Suroviecki's conditions or, or for, for the wisdom of crowds uh, he has not talked about the size of the crowd but he, he didn't talk about the size of the crowd because he's talking about a crowd and a crowd is more than you know, there's some 20 students that we have in this, in this group here, right? Uh, so even summing up with uh, people from last year, it's still we are a very, let's consider that we are a very small crowd and this do, does not necessarily work as well for us as it would if we were uh, 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 a, significantly, a significantly larger crowd with respect to the statistics here. But anyway, uh, so this is why you see some people here that's participated on the 20. 3rd of uh, June last year and you're, you're these guys down here. I had to do a, a little fixing here just uh, for example I think this first answer that we had here the guy had written 91 for the year so I, I, I did, did little fixings like that sometimes you wrote 60 million for example then I you know I, 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 I'm sure that I have not um, changed your intentions but I, I did have to tweak a little bit with the with the numbers here, which means that whenever we have raw data, we have to have a look at them uh, because uh, sometimes uh, it's clear that w w whenever I, I mean, I ask here the population of Sydney in Australia in millions of people, and then someone wrote whatever number, millions, right? They, they included the, the, the millions here. It was definitely, I, I can assure that the intention of the, the, per, the, the person was not having those additional six zeros there. Okay, so I, I did a little, li very little cleaning, but sure that uh, I'm sure that I didn't change anything. Let's have a look at, at the results we got here. Then uh, the mean or the average uh, for the what is the typical cruise speed of a Boeing 777? Well, what Google tells me, and I, I'm assuming that it's true. Uh, is 920. Uh, what you uh, gave us answers was between a, between 296. Well, this was very precise, uh, but very wrong. Uh, and uh, and a thousand it seems to be. Maybe I should include the, the minimum and the maximum as well, and you would see the effect of the minimum and the maximum in the in the mean, the calculation of the mean and average. Let me do that very quickly here. Just includes two lines here. Uh, I will include the minimum and the maximum and. So let's see. Uh, notice that uh, uh, in, in this case, uh, we, well, uh, what, what could have happened, and the reason why we usually tend to think that it's important to work with the median, not the mean, for the wisdom of crowds, is that sometimes we have what we call outliers, those people who are far out in one direction or the other, and they do affect, they, they, they could affect. The, the mean they would not affect the median right uh, in fact that, that problem for example I think I don't I don't remember which was but for example here for what is the population of Sydney in Australia in millions let's say if this person here had written 60 million like that okay is it 60 million I think it is uh, 
uh, notice that it would affect a lot the 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 mean, but it will not affect uh, the median, right? Even being a number completely out of uh, proportion. Uh, but anyway, uh, we can still uh, notice that here, considering that the minimum for the popula well, the population of Australia, according to Google, and this is according to Google last year, so it may have changed a little bit. And besides, according to Google, where in Google, I don't know, I just asked guys and told me, tell us what the great oracle tells, uh, uh, has as, as being the truth. Uh, it, came, it came out as 5.3 million inhabitants. Notice that the minimum uh, that appeared here was one, the maximum was 80 million, uh, uh, and then the, the mean was 12 million, probably carried, uh, well, pushed a little to the top by the 80 million, and also there's a 60 million here, right? Uh, you know, not, not even the whole population of Australia is, I think the whole population of Australia is probably some 20 something million. It's, it's, it's the, it's very, very low densely inhabited that country and continent. Uh, the median was 3.5. We were, f we were, uh, notice that here, in, in, in none of these we were really sharp in our, in our answer. But again, if we check here for the typical cruise speed of the Boeing, considering that the median was 800 and the right answer is 920, so the median is 120 away from the maximum, right? Uh, let's see how many people did better than that. This, this one did better, okay? This, this would be a better, let's say, this guy would be a better guesser than taking the median. I'll, I'll show this in, in green here. Who else? This guy here would be a better guesser. This would be the same. This would be a better guesser. Okay, so. Who else? This, this guy, well, I will not include the one that is the same. Okay, the same is, then we'll keep to the, uh, this guy would be a better guesser and this one. individually, right? Let's see if there are any better guessers here at the top. Oops, sorry. This guy is a better guesser, this one. And this one. All right, uh, well, we, we had several better guessers for this first uh, question than uh, the mean. But at the same time, notice, so how, how many there were? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight better guessers. Eight out of uh, 25. Uh, the problem with the crowds is that we never know who the better, uh, the, the better guesser is, right? So. If I had to just say, well, I will either get the, uh, work with the mean or I would choose someone randomly, I would have a, a better chance of sticking to the mean, right? Because only one third of the guesses were better than the average. But still, uh, in this case here, um, uh, I, I didn't get very impressed with, with our results, right? Uh, let's see what happens here with the population of Sydney. Uh, it's 5.3, the, the median was 3.5, which means that we are uh, 1.8 away. Who was better? These, guys, these two guys here were better. This was about the same, maybe a little better, right? Check it with, check if I'm doing this right. I'm just doing very, very quickly here, but I think this is okay. Let's see. Seven is, 
7 is better, it's 5.5, .5, right? So this is better. So again, here, I'm not too surprised to, too, you know, but again, I think this is, these are the ones that are better than, oh, uh, no, but we, we, we as a group, who, oh, oh yeah, five is, five is also better. Anyone else? Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, three, six. Six out of, it's not 25, it's actually 24, right? Because the first, because the first uh, line is three, uh, uh, six out of 24, again, uh, uh, one fourth. So again, we would do better with, if we, if we don't know who the specialist is, it's better to go with the, me, the, the, the median than going with uh, trying to, try, trying to go with the idea of whoever speaks louder in the group. Many times, uh, whoever speaks louder may be, may be good at imposing his ideas, but not, ne not necessarily of having good ideas. Look at this one here, we nailed. I didn't know that, uh, well, I, I, I have known that Nirvana released this album in, in, in 91 for quite a few years since I, I read uh, sort of Yaki the first time, right? But, uh, but you nailed here, right? Uh, the median was precisely 1991. How many guessers were as good as the as the median? Uh, well, this guy, uh, you cou you couldn't do better. But this guy knew the, this. This guy was a specialist in Nirvana. There's another specialist here, another specialist here, and there's not another specialist here. And those were the guys who were as good as the mean, not better than the mean, as good as. So here, here we we nailed. Uh, what about Mamona's Assassinas? Let's check what our answers were. So Google's, well, yeah, Google says it's 1996. The median was 1996, so we nailed it. Uh, but notice the minimum and maximum here. Okay, 2015. Who would, who would have said that? Uh, maybe, you know what? We have among ourselves, of course, we have to, to, to know that there are, there are people here who do not even know who Mamona's Assassinas are. But notice one thing, this is a, 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 an interesting thing in a, in a, in a, 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 about humans. We take a guess. Even, of course, if our guess is absolutely uninformed, if we don't have any uh, information, the chances that our guess is wrong are very strong. But we still many times take a guess. It's almost like you know, when you ask someone for directions on the streets and they say, keep going. They don't know, but they say, yeah, keep going because they don't want to say that, that admit that they don't know. Uh, and it's not because they want to, you know, have a go at you and, and uh, they, 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 they want to do you harm. It's just that they're too embarrassed to say that they don't know. So they say, oh, keep going. Um, notice, but again, as a, a team, we did well. I, I realized here that there was only well, we had, in fact, this year we had the, everyone filled in all answers, almost as if you were obliged to, but you weren't, right? I mean, uh, you could leave blank. It was not, I mean, you have to, to fill this in, otherwise you cannot go further. Last year, I had someone who, who didn't dare, uh, you know, having a clue on, on where, when Nirvana released uh, Nevermind. Uh, and last year we also had someone who didn't have any clue about the population of Sydney and decided to keep quiet. This, these are things that I believe we'll have to start learning to do uh, if we are able to, as, men, uh, as a society, to develop into a more collectively intelligent group. We should simply say, I don't know. So it's, it's that, that adocracy of well, this time I, I hope that someone one who has a better knowledge than me leads because I will only introduce noise here. I cannot introduce any knowledge. I keep telling you uh, that uh, grandmother is um, saying that we have two ears, one mouth, but we, we definitely want to use our mouth a lot, right? Maybe it's, there's times that we should say, Let, let's see what others have to say about it. Okay, this was our first experiment. This was the exper a wisdom of crowds experiments uh, with, uh, I, I believe, 
with respect to the questions that we asked, uh, even being a, a, a relatively small group, we can say that we, we are unbiased. Right? Now, we have two other polls that I did with you for group A and group B, where you were biased. Let's see what happened here. Not going there. Oh, okay. So this is it. So this is uh, the first group. Uh, um, for the first group to which I asked the population of Turkey, these were the answers that were obtained. Of course, this group is much smaller still because we split the class in half. So we only have 10 responses here. Uh, and. Um, and three, three were from last year, and the others are from this year. You are a larger group than last year. Uh, and notice that the answer to this question was the mean was 76.4, and the median was 80. Okay. And then I asked to the other group, I also asked, what is the population of Turkey? And their answers, well, the, the, the average here, the mean was 38, the median was 26. Could anyone check what the population of Turkey is? Just to, I, I didn't include the Google answer here, but let's, Google, Google can tell us. Turkey. Uh, 84 million. 84 million, okay. So, Let's say the truth is 84 here, and the truth is also 84 here. It's not a matter of why uh, group A performed better than group B. It is really why did group A perform differently to group B, considering that I asked exactly the same question. I mean, I mean, you are all graduate students with, of course, maybe one of you has already been to Turkey or, or has read a, a, a manual, an almanac, in which they told the population of Turkey yesterday. Uh, we all have our biases. Uh, we may think that it's larger or smaller, but what's, what was the problem in this case? The problem was the first question that I asked you. For group A, I asked you, do you think, well, let me see if I can change this here, do you think that the population of Turkey is more or less than 100 million inhabitants? And for group B, I asked, Do you think the population of Turkey is more or less than 30 million inhabitants? This first question, they're, they're, they're two completely independent questions, but the answer to the first one anchored your answer to the second one. Those who, for whatever, whatever reason, had already thought, oh, whoa, whoa. let's say the number 30 asked you for an opinion, and after you gave that opinion, uh, your, ne your ne next question was not an unbiased uh, question any longer. So see, when, when we say that wisdom, the wisdom of crowds relies on unbiased people, see how easily they can, they can very quickly be biased. Right? Uh, unfortunately, and, and, and this, this makes it difficult for you to be sure that what you're getting is the wisdom of crowds with that with biases, biases cancelling out each other because we may have been influenced for whatever, something that happened the previous day, uh, something that happened, uh, well, a, a, a question like this that was intentionally or not intentionally posed right before. Um, this is, uh, uh, there is this uh, 
this um, Arabic uh, tale that says that once one of those, uh, I don't know how they call it, in, in English I don't know how you call the, the, the kings of those Arab uh, tribes, and, but anyway, one of them had had a dream and he dreamed that uh, the king dreamed that he had lost all his teeth in the mouth. And of course, as he believed that dreams uh, usually brought uh, information about the future, the king invited uh, uh, a dream, what we call a dream interpreter or whatever, to come and tell him what that image of him without any te teeth in the mouth uh, meant. And uh, then this, this guru, this uh, wise man that came to, which ended up not being very wise, told the king, well, this is, this is a disgrace, uh, majesty. It means for each teeth, each tooth that you lose, uh, that you lost in, in your dream, that meant that you lost a person in your life, someone died. So each tooth means, each tooth that you, you, you didn't have in your dream, means that you saw someone that you loved die, which means that you, you're going to see a lot of, uh, uh, you know, your loved ones die before you. I'm sorry to give you such bad news. Uh, of course, the king was mm, not very happy with that uh, interpretation of the dream and uh, told his guard to kill the, the wise man or the not so wise man. And then he called another dream uh, teller to come and, and interpret his dream. And this guy said, Majesty, you're really lucky. You're going to live more than most people in this, you know, around you. And then he was really pleased and gave the second uh, dream interpreter or dream uh, teller a um, hundred coins of gold, uh, gold coins. And then someone else was there asked, what was the difference between the two interpretations of the dream? It was only the way it was told. So many times, depending on how, even how a question is posed, will lead people to, to different answers. And, 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 and the wisdom of crowd may be manipulated because of that risk of bias. Right? Right? So this is, this, uh, again, we'll, we'll be discussing over this course the possibility, different possibilities of dealing with collective intelligence. Uh, but we always have to know that it's not easy. If it, if it, if it were easy, uh, every, everyone would be doing uh, this all the time. There, there are problems there, right? Uh, someone may think, oh, so, so the wisdom of the crowd may allow someone to make billions of dollars in the stock exchange. I believe so, right? Uh, for example, if Google checks in real time the names of the assets that people are checking on Google, it will have a good measure of the interest of people on Petrobras, Vale, or whatever company here in Brazil, for example, uh, and uh, and will uh, probably someone doing that will probably uh, be ahead of others in decision making. So the wisdom of crowds is going to be there, but at the same times, uh, at the same time, we have to check what what is the risk of whatever is happening being biased by by other things that are happening. Okay. Any any questions here, guys? Any comments about these spreadsheets or the results that we obtained? All right. I will make these um, these um, spreadsheets here. Uh, I, I'll, I'll share I'll share the results with you after class today, so that you examine them again. Uh, but it's basically, um, I mean, very quick, very, very simple answers analyzed with very simple statistics, just the median and the mean, uh, and already providing us with some 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 understanding, let's say, of uh, of how a, a crowd thinks about something. Okay, and 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 not only how a crowd thinks, but also what what is the fact behind uh, those those opinions that a crowd is giving. Right? Again, you were a little far uh, away in, in the 
Well, not, not, a, not really. You're not far. You, you're not. Uh, no, notice that the answers that you gave for the first two questions here, they were not bad, considering the, the, the median. Considering that you, you thought that the, the speed of a, a Boeing 777 was 800 and 9, 920, I can assure you that a, a Boeing can fly at that uh, speed with no problem, right? So you, if, if you had to, let's say, if, 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 if the crowd had to take control of, of, of the plane and uh, the information that they need to, to include there in the panel was at what speed should, should we fly, choosing 800 would be good. Choosing 296 maybe would not be very good, right? Uh, and, and maybe choosing, uh, well, we didn't have extremes to the other end, uh, but uh, would pro probably be in, uh, unfeasible. And the same thing here, you know, 3.5 uh, million is sort of, uh, it shows that we're talking about a metropolis, but we are not talking about uh, a, a Sao Paulo or Tokyo or Mexico City. We're talking about a metropolis maybe the size of Curitiba, a little larger than Curitiba. But you, let's say the, the, the median here, as, as a group, we understand that Sydney is a, let's say, a middle-sized metropolis in the world. Um, so we didn't do bad, but look, look at how good we were here. We definitely get, get gold medals for these two, which seem that the two mo the, the, for me, it would be the two most difficult ones for me to nail as a person, right? The others, I, w I would at least feel confident that I would get sort of clo or closer than this one, this two here, maybe. I don't know. All right, okay, so what we will do now, we will get to our, in Moodle, we have for, for today, we have again um, a forum in which I want to maybe write what called you, what we didn't talk about, the, the lost submarine and, 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 and some of those stories that appeared in the book. Uh, but I, I just want you to, to tell us what impressed you the most and maybe why uh, and maybe interact a little bit with what others say that called their attention the most. Uh, so, so let's do that. We'll be here from, from now for, for another hour or so uh, doing that, but we, we won't be. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll keep uh, the, the Google Meet going if anyone has questions or anything, you just have to, to ask, and, but, but I'll, I'll We'll focus on that now, okay? So, see you guys. Uh, and by the way, for, for next week, don't, don't forget, it's uh, chapters 2 to 6. And whatever videos you haven't watched that are available there, it's always good if you have a chance of doing it. Okay?